Good morning. Hey, Candy. Hey, Zen Ginger. How are you? You know you've. Um, you know you. You know you've made it. Uh, you know you've made it when, uh, when you have one thumb down before the before the uh, before the live stream even starts. Uh, one thumb down. <laughs> All right, thank you for that. So, um, hello everybody and good morning to you wherever you are. I think this morning um, it was Clint's Aquata, Clint's Aqua Tanks. You were number one, my friend. You were here first. I appreciate your, uh, uh, you coming in early like that. Send me your address to ben.o.cichlet at gmail. I'm going to send you some stickers for being the early bird, my friend. <laughs> I appreciate that. So, um, more folks are coming on. Uh, call, fax, telex, uh, smoke signal your friends. Get them all onto the stream. Uh, let's, ha let's have some fun here. And uh, let's see. Hey, Kevin. Kevin and Candy, two of my great moderators. Of course, my moderators, GP, uh, Gravinder. The wonderful Candy, Kevin Green, and Denny, who I think, I don't think Denny's going to make it today. Dennis Rudell, he has, uh, he has some work obligations. And, of course, these folks are not paid. They're volunteers. And uh, Ala Travelern jumps in. And good morning to you, my friend. Jumps in with a super chat. Thank you so much. And um, anyway, he had some, uh, these folks volunteer to be moderators they don't get paid, so I, I anything that they do for for the moder, you know, for moderating, I, it's greatly appreciated, and it's not like they're under any pressure to be here. So um, let's see who else we have here. We have a good. Let me see. Twenty-two thumbs up already. That's pretty good. I think that's that's the total I got on my first entire entire uh, live stream. So um, a shout out to all of you who are here, uh, and a big welcome, a big welcome, and shout out to my moderators. Thank you so much. And also, of course, to um, the Super Chatters, uh, last week's Super Chatters, uh, thank you so much. And uh, for those of you who don't know, of course, a Super Chat is where you can support the channel by throwing a little dough into the pot. Also, thank you to those of you who uh, have purchased merchandise. I noticed that some of you are buying some of these mugs, and I appreciate it. And the hoodies, tees, and tank tops, which will, uh, a little bit cold for tank tops right now, but they will, be, uh, they will come in handy in a few months. So, um, this was a very interesting week. Uh, <clears throat> it started, of course, with a, a very, um, hey, Caesar Sosa. It started with a very simple um, cichlid feeding video in uh, slow motion. Uh, just something kind of simple that I just kind of threw out. And uh, it's, I think it's over a thousand views now, and I think it's done okay. But, uh, you know, sometimes I like to put something out there that's just sort of lighthearted. Uh, doesn't doesn't require a lot of uh, planning or deep thought or anything of that nature, and uh, certainly a feeding video would fall in that category. And then and then things got really interesting because I uh, I get this email from uh, you know from Richard in, over in in, uh, in the UK R Richard through the pond guru and says hey. Uh, I, I have a video for I, I finally have it. I, I finally put together something for you and uh, can I send it can I send it over? <clears throat> and uh, I had sort of almost I had almost given up because he is so busy. Those who don't know much about Ponguru, uh, he is not just biohome, but he has uh, you know of course he has a pond, a big very large pond, but he also has other businesses, other channels and uh, is quite busy. And uh, so, at any rate, I was very happy to get, uh, you know, to get this material in. And it was so much material that I couldn't do it in one video. And I didn't want to cut out uh, a lot of his message. So I decided to put it out uh, in two parts. And, and for those of you who follow my channel, you know that I, I don't do videos in parts. I don't do, uh, I don't do uh, you know, a series or things of that nature. And uh, hello, GP. And uh, glad you're here. And so it, 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 I decided to go ahead and, and, and split it up so I could uh, maximize the content and, uh, and get, uh, you know, get 
get him to really say what he what he wanted to say, get his message across. And and I think it was a pretty good message. I think what he had to say made sense. He wasn't uh, really pushing, or, you know, he wasn't shoving anything uh, down anybody's throat. It was, hey, look, you know, here's here's how it came about. Here's how we market, marketed it. Here's the responses we've gotten back over the years. And, uh, and in the end, uh, you know, it's your call. Just realize that there are a lot of things to consider here when you're, when you're looking at, at uh, not just his media, but any media, you know, any media really. And uh, it was very interesting to me because there were the vast majority of folks that watched those two videos, uh, the far overwhelming majority were actually very, very positive. There were really only a couple folks that, that kept sort of chiming in about, uh, you know, with, with a viewpoint that wasn't positive. And I think, um, hey, Danny, thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. Danny uh, Hoganboom, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, my friend from, uh, from the Europe. And uh, at any rate, the, um, the message really was, was one of, um, the, 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 the message I thought was put across in a way that took into account all of the moving parts that are going on uh, in an aquarium and, and it sort of forced us to really seriously take under consideration the different kinds of things that are going on. <clears throat> there really is no one size fits all. There isn't. And even in my tanks, I have a variety of media and I get a, um, you know, I get a range of results. So, um, so there really just were a few folks that were really strong detractors. The overwhelming majority was very positive and um, a lot of folks who actually have used the product were commenting and that to me has a tremendous amount of weight. Um, unfortunately, we don't really have, as a community, we don't really have a lot of um, readily at hand uh, science, you know, scientifically published and, and, and cross-checked or what they call sometimes peer-reviewed or duplicated, replicated studies that tell us this will do this or that will do that. As a community, we tend to rely a lot on, on word of mouth. And how many of us, how many of you have gone out and acquired a product, uh, not because you went and read some science uh, somewhere, but because you saw somebody on YouTube or a friend mention to you, um, hey, look, you know, I tried this food and uh, I just got a comment. I got a comment uh, this morning. Somebody uh, sent me a text uh, Jackie, uh, uh, I, I met Jackie and her husband Rob last night. They're uh, fish keepers here in, uh, in, in the area. And uh, they came by and bought four of my fish. Uh, two Plasterochromus gazelles and two Plasterochromus deep waters. And, uh, and she sent me a text this morning thanking me for the tip on, on Sarah food because her fish loved it. Now, I didn't study Sarah scientifically. I, I, I read the ingredients on it and I have an opinion about it. I know what happened when I, when I tried to feed uh, Vincent, my star sapphire, with Sarah. I saw how he reacted to it and, and, I, and I talked about it in video. So she ordered some up. That's, that seems to be how this community, how this fish keeping community tends to operate, especially now in the world of, of you know, in this world of social media. Now, by the way, for those of you who have just come on, um, this this uh, this live stream is certi certified uh, coronavirus free. We are free of all coronavirus here at this live stream. I have uh, 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 wiped and disinfected the the phone and my microphone. You are all safe. Nothing to worry about. So. What, what a wild situation. My son in San Francisco is working from home. The entire, we're talking 250 employees, all of them working from home. Um, my son who works for Major League Baseball 
spring training is canceled. For those of you who understand baseball, um, you have to get your wits around this. Thousands of people are going home because spring training for Major League Baseball is canceled. The um, South by Southwest, a music festival that brings thousands of people together in the Austin area in Texas, canceled. Uh, so uh, we have a quite, quite a situation going on here. And uh, anyway, hopefully we will, we will all do fine. I, I hear people asking about uh, can fish uh, can fish carry or uh, contract uh, corona? I don't think so. And uh, we're seeing a lot of memes, uh, memes popping up, you know, and uh, my favorite so far has been um, man with corona seeking woman with Lyme. So I, I thought that was kind of clever. So. <laughs> so at any rate, getting back to the subject at hand, the... Uh, you know, we had Corey, we had Corey chime in. We had, um, uh, with, a, with, with an email and a quote that I relayed to you, we had Dr. Tanner uh, chime in from Swiss Tropicals. And of course we had Richard Threw, uh, probably with the largest contribution to the subject uh, from, uh, you know, from the UK. So, you know, there was a lot of input. There was a lot of input in the comments uh, both that, that were done under the video. Some of you emailed me directly. Some of you, uh, you know, so we, a, a tremendous amount of input. And so at, at the end of the day, um, th th these are my conclusions and you, you can, you, you can um, do with them as you will. And, and certainly, um, you know, everybody has to make up their own mind. But I, I think, I think that, that you really have to, you really have to dial things in to the uniqueness of your particular setup. It makes, it makes total sense that if, look, if you have a lightly stocked tank, if you have a lightly stocked tank and you put any kind of media, you know, in, in, in good enough volume in there and you have plants going on, you're, you're not going to have a, um, uh, you're not going to necessarily have a nitrate issue. And if you have a deep enough, a deep enough substrate, right? A deep enough bed uh, in, in your tank where you can create a, um, an anaerobic zone, you know, deep in the substrate, you, you could actually have the conditions necessary to, con to convert nitrate into a form where it can simply gas off of your tank. Um, <clears throat> now, as you start to change, as you start to change those circumstances, as you start to go into a, a tank like the one behind me here, where I can't have, I can't have plants because they'll get destroyed. Add that to a substrate that is going to get very disturbed because that's what cichlids do. They simply pick up and disturb substrate. So the chances of a undisturbed, unless I get a very, very deep substrate, the chances of getting a very undisturbed uh, substrate in this tank is very unlikely. And figure into that equation, I have a type of fish that is notorious uh, and well known for just being an absolute uh, an absolute ammonia factory. Uh, cichlids are, are uh, and of course, depends on size and depends on the, you know, there's other factors, right? How much you feed, the size of the fish, the, the, the stocking level of the tank. This tank behind me, you probably wouldn't call it a, uh, a overstock tank. Would you call this an overstock tank? A well-stocked tank? By, by most cichlid standards, you would probably call this a, um, you probably call it a lightly stocked tank. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of moving parts, and and you have to you have to get keep all of them in mind when when uh, keep all of that in mind when you're actually considering or taking into account media. I mean that's you know and now let me give you my own anecdotal experience. 
I have um, I have about two kilos of Biohome Ultimate that, have, that has been running continuously for about four years in, in two Sun Sun 302 canisters under the 60 gallon grow out tank, which is probably my most stable, my most stable tank. It is not heavily stocked. It is used as a transition tank for, I mean, the reason I sold the four fish that I just sold last night and moved four fish out of the 100 was because I'm moving uh, the, the sand diver and the gar are gonna be moving out of the 60 and going to the 100. So I just wanted to make a little bit of room and probably the two living, living stonies that are in the 60 are gonna be going over to the 100. So, uh, so at any rate, the, the, uh, that, that Biohome Ultimate has created circumstances that are extremely stable. That tank really stays dial in, dialed in very, very well. Nitrates, eh, 20-ish, 20, 30-ish, you know, around uh, the time I do a water change. And, uh, and it also, but full disclosure, I also have in there probably two baskets of Marine Pure. Uh, the Marine, so who's doing the, the, you know, who's doing the heavy lifting there on the nitrates on the, on the uh, anaerobic bacteria? Is it the Marine Pure? Is it the Biohome Ultimate? Is it both? You know, so is it, would you call that a test of any value? No. It has no scientific value whatsoever. It's one anecdotal observation from one fish keeper who's just saying, hey, look, I've got a very stable tank. I've been using it for four years. I, I, pull, I pull those baskets out and I, and I, and I hold that, that, ult, that uh, Biohome Ultimate. It is rock solid. It doesn't have any buildup of mulm on it. It, it seems uh, still very, very um, new in a lot of ways. And uh, so, I, you know, it, it seems to be a, uh, uh, I can't complain. I've got very healthy fish in there, a very stable environment. Can I tell you it's the Biohome Ultimate that's doing it? No, I can't say that because there's other factors. There's the stocking level, there's the, you know, and there's the Marine Pier that's in there, okay? My 100 is pretty stable as well, but what have I got in there? My 100, I've got, I have an algae scrubber that's eating away nitrates, right? I have uh, pumice in, in the uh, FX6. You know, I have other, other things going on and it's a, it's a heavier stock tank. So again, so many different scenarios. At the end of the day, like Corey alluded to, we have a lot of moving parts we have a lot of factors to, to, to consider in there. And whether you're talking about the stocking levels, the type of fish you're keeping, the amount of substrate, whether you have plants or not, how much water turnover is occurring, uh, how often you're servicing your canisters. You see, thank you, Danny. I appreciate it, buddy. Uh, you know, this, so again, a lot of moving parts to take into consideration. If you're looking for a, um, Brian, Brian's going to start a GoFundMe to buy me an eight footer. I like that, Brian, you got to go fund me. <laughs> At any rate, so a lot of things, a lot of things to keep in mind. And, um, the one thing that I, that I, um, and I was all for, and I knew, I knew when I invited, um, when I invited Richard months ago, I knew that he was going to, um, that he was going to get some reaction from people because he does, he does, he, he just does. Uh, and, and, and people, a lot of people love him as you saw in the comments under the videos and some people don't and, and, uh, name a product that doesn't have that. You know, Google any product. You know, people love their Apple phones. I mean, there's like an Apple phone cult, you know. <laughs> I'm broadcasting right now on an Apple phone. There are people who love Apple. Well, Google it and see what you find. You'll get horror stories. Um, 
So that's just the world we live in right now. So I expected that. And I don't mind a spirited, um, uh, even passionate discussion about uh, products, even though sometimes it, it, it goes a little bit over the top because at the end of the day, it's fish and it's media. And some people just lose their minds, which I, to me is like, really? But, um, but still, I don't mind a passionate discussion if it's kept, if it's kept um, friendly, if it's not malicious, if it's uh, kept respectful, then that's okay. That's okay. I, I, you know, hey, you know, bring, bring on the counter uh, argument, bring on the, uh, you know, where you disagree, that's okay with me, because I, I want to hear all the different sides, right? And uh, <laughs> Brian, <laughs> oh my God, you're a good guy, Brian. Nineteen dollars down, nineteen twenty dollars down, and and uh, four thousand to go. <laughs> you know what? I, what I'd love, I, you know this. I'd love a ten footer. I'd love to get a ten foot by about maybe eighteen inches to twenty inches high, so it's easy to get to the bottom. And uh, but give guys like that big old eye biter, and uh, you know that that trout that's just getting bigger and bigger. Uh, give all those guys a. Uh, uh, a lot of room and uh, you know a lot of a lot of horizontal swim room and uh, you know put the tank a little bit up high almost like at eye, eye level and I just think that would be uh, that would be awesome so at any rate so um, it was a, a very spirited discussion and uh, uh, Gervinder jumps in <laughs> thank you GP <laughs> I appreciate it and and GP you know Gervinder Gervinder was, uh, in, in some ways, in the discussion, uh, uh, you know, putting forth, like, okay, look, here, here's my counter-argument on, on what's, what's going on. But he did it, he did it very respectfully, and he did it in, in, a, in a very, um, you know, gentle, gentlemanly fashion. And, and what he said, made, a lot of it made sense. And, and so it made people stop and think and look. There were other people who came in and, and, and sort of, uh, flashed some unverifiable credential, you know, I, well, I was a scientist and, you know, I worked for NASA for 20 years and I blah, blah, blah. You know, in social media, it doesn't, that, it sounds great, but it doesn't mean anything because it, there used to be people in, 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 in doctor's jackets with stethoscopes on television telling us that smoking was good for you, and if you were pregnant, it would help with the pregnancy and the baby. Doctors. <laughs> so realize that, that throwing out something like that on social media these days, it's lost a lot of its, a lot of its, its traction, its horsepower. So again, we're, we're back to the world of anecdotal. We're back to uh, what's worked for you, how many reports have come back that have said that they liked it? How many comments are using it and are happy with it? How many people say they hate it? And, uh, and that seems to be the power today. I mean, just look at Yelp. I mean, Yelp in some cases has destroyed businesses. And in some cases, the Yelp reviews were, were put there by, in some cases, competitors. And when the business contacted Yelp and said, those people never did business with me, and yet they're impacting my business very negatively. Yelp said, well, if you become a member and pay this fee, we will move those down in the, and all of a sudden you have an extortion ring going on. So anyway, so um, take everything with a giant, take everything with a giant grain of salt, my friends. And um, in the end, it's all going to be anecdotal in, at, at the, in the current state that we're in as a hobby. So uh, thank you for the contributions to the eight-foot tank. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. So um, I have a question for you. And if you have information about this, I would like to know about it. On the one hand, uh, folks are promoting a, a, a deep substrate 
because at the bottom of the substrate, it's 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 purported that you can get that you can get anaerobic bacteria colonizing that will that will help to convert the nitrate into something that'll gas off, off of your you know, that'll leave your tank. Now, on the other hand, I'm hearing I'm hearing that a deep substrate can be a, a place for pockets of a certain kind of gas that can be very, very dangerous to your fish. And that if you disturb it and release the gas, if you, if you leave it alone for a long period of time and don't rake it, and don't rake it, which would of course counteract, it would seem that it would counteract the, the anaerobic bacteria but if you don't rake it, you get these pockets of dangerous gas that, if released, could actually be dangerous or lethal to your fish. So this is one of these fish-keeping conundrums, one of these fish-keeping contradictions. So, so wait a minute. So do I, you know, do I keep, do I keep a deep substrate for anaerobic and nitrate conversion? Do I have to rake it to release the poisonous gas, or do I do I leave it alone? So, so where are we on this? Is it safe or is it not safe? So, you know, as a hobby, we have a lot of these 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 sort of contradictions that float around. The other day, I read about another one: um, leave your tank alone when you're cycling it. And yet another web page from, from what seemed like a reputable person said, do small water changes as you're trying to get your tank ready for fish because it'll help reduce the ammonia levels, especially if you're trying to cycle your tank with fish in it. Do water changes. So again, we have two contradictory. Someone says, leave it alone, let the ammonia go up and let the bacteria then develop that'll consume that ammonia, turn it to nitrite, and then get get that bacteria going to get that nitrate, nitrite into nitrate. And and then another person is saying, no, 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 you gotta do the water changes, especially if you're doing a live fish cycle, you've got to do the water changes. And uh, so again, uh, we go through this process, we go and we look for research, and uh, if if you have comments, and someone said sulfide gas, okay, good, so we're getting. So if you, if you have uh, comments on the substrate gas issue, the raking, the, the, the need to rake the substrate that is deep, and at the same time, how does that fit into the uh, anaerobic equation of creating an anaerobic process? I would love to hear about that in the comments below. If you can reference if you can reference any articles or anything like that, I'd love to hear about it. Also, for those of you who have experience and knowledge in the cycling of a tank and uh, whether or not you've done water changes during that cycling, I'd love to hear your comments on that as well. I mean, I've cycled tanks uh, primarily through the use of media that I've pulled from other filters and, uh, and then and then added fish immediately. And so I treated the tank as if it was an established tank almost from day one and, uh, and, did, and did water changes. Like after a few days, I'd do a little bit of a water change. I'd be you know, taking tests, things of that nature. And, uh, and as, the, as the fish became more and more active and, uh, and seemed to be uh, you know, doing well, I added more fish and uh, kept doing water changes, things of this nature. So um, GP says, as for cycling a new tank, you should not do water changes. Now, would that apply if you are cycling with live fish or are they going to become overstressed by the ammonia that you're intentionally trying to get because you want that ammonia because it'll result in the good kind of bacteria that ultimately you're going for. So <clears throat> again, yeah, fish in, a fish in cycle or a fishless cycle, we have different kind of things here. So. Very interesting subjects, and again, some of those areas within the hobby that if you Google them, you're going to find a lot of different, a lot of different information. 
Who's drinking coffee? <laughs> Who's drinking out of one of these cups? <laughs> All right. So, um, at any rate, let's see here. One other comment on this nitrogen cycle, it seems like the, 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 holy, the holy grail that everybody seems to be going after, of course, is, is reducing the need for uh, water changes. And um, as a, an African cichlid keeper, and uh, I think I'm, I, my conclusion for me anyway is I'm always going to be uh, doing some kind of a water change uh, because the adding of minerals to the water and because of the type of fish they are, the kind of ammonia production that these beasts tend to, tend to put out, um, it's going to be real hard to be able to create a situation where the nitrates are going to be actually completely consumed. And especially now when, I, when I've discovered that I have nitrates coming out of my tap, now that could change, but uh, I've discovered about a 10 parts per million nitrate. And if you go back to a, a few videos ago where I, where I uh, put out a video called from, from tap to tank, I talked about uh, what uh, a term that I stole from one of you called nit nitrate creep. Uh, someone mentioned uh, that nitrate creep was a lie or a myth. Oh, that's not true. Eventually it levels out. And he was quoting amounts like, you know, 600 parts per million, uh, you know, 300, 400 parts per million. It will level out. Nitrate creep is a myth. Well, wait a minute. To get to that level, there's going to be a lot of creeping going on and before it plateaus. And so uh, I don't think nitrate creep is uh, entirely a myth. I think it'll go on until uh, it maybe it'll, it'll reach a point where it'll, it'll plateau out a little bit. But uh, at any rate, I think for me, I'm going to always be doing water changes for a couple of reasons. One, I like remineralizing the water, which occurs with water changes. I've also heard it can, it can have an impact on hormones in the water. You know, I, that could be positive, I guess. Uh, also, because of what I see going on with the fish after a water change, I notice that they brighten up considerably. Um, they color up considerably. They go into sometimes breeding uh, types of behavior. And those are all good things. Those are all what we would call good indicators uh, with a fish. And uh, so I, I'm, I personally, I'm, I'm sort of, I've stopped hunting for the holy grail of zero water changes. I think I'm always going to be doing water changes. My current regimen is at least once a week. And recently I've been doing up to 60% only because of the uh, 10 10 parts per million coming out of the tap. Uh, I'll keep testing the tap, and if that if that evens out or corrects out, I may actually go back to a, a 20 to 40 percent water change, which I think is is just a little bit less, um, certainly less time consuming, and can be less stressful on the fish, especially if you're uh, introducing water that is. Uh, I don't worry about temperature being mismatching because I'm very good about matching temperature. But if you're putting in water that is um, different with regards to pH, the pH, the acidic uh, levels of the water can actually uh, cause some stress for your fish. Now, because I'm doing the water changes so frequently, uh, that pH is probably pretty stable. But what if the, what if the water treatment area in, in our, the water treatment department in our area did something that caused some kind of a shift in pH. I mean, I don't know what that would be, but we could actually have a uh, uh, we could have an interesting situation. And um, goatee guy, uh, yes, yes, I did. I uh, my 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 nitrates came down to around twenty ish, um, which was really good for these tanks to around twenty ish after after the um, after the water change settled out when I went back to the 60% or more water change uh, regimen. So uh, 10 parts per million out of the tap, uh, you know, flirting around 20, uh, you know, hanging around 20 to 30 uh, after the second, you know, like a day or two after the water change, settling out at about that, which is good. 
because I was seeing readings of around 80, 60 to 80, uh, which is, uh, which some of you say is okay. It's not going to harm the fish. Some of you will say that. And uh, some of you say that nitrates are, are not necessarily a bad thing until you get up into extremely high levels. And again, other people will say keep them as close to 10 or zero as possible. So we have, uh, again, a uh, an interesting topic within the hobby and uh, somewhere in there use your own common sense use your own observation observe your fish see where they seem to be doing well and above all don't stress we have enough stress already don't get all worked up because someone said their fish are healthy at 80 parts per million don't get all worked up because someone says their tank is at zero and you don't believe it. You accuse them of lying. Don't get all worked up because somebody chooses Biohome Ultimate or likes Matrix or prefers sponges. Just take a deep breath and realize that we have a lot bigger problems in the world right now. Uh, a lot bigger than the media that someone decides to use <laughs> in their fish tank. <laughs> all right. So um, let me, let, let's talk about some of the comments some of the comments I've read, and uh, we have 121 people, 119 people with 58 thumbs up. Thank you, everybody. Love it, love it. I remember, remember, uh, remember Candy and uh, Kevin, GP. We were like cranking to get 100 on the live stream. It was like such a, and uh, I really appreciate you folks hanging in there because there's been a learning curve here, and. Uh, Someone told me about the IFG uh, attempt to interview IFG and the trouble I had on that live stream. And, uh, you know, you folks have been through a lot with me, a lot of a learning curve, technical issues, things of this nature. And I really appreciate it. I told the person that said that he couldn't watch it because of the problems. I told him, hey, listen, I gave the video a thumbs down. So. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so. Here were some comments. That I've, that I've picked up, and uh, Cesar Sosa said that he was driving back home with 18 peacocks and haps. 18 peacocks and haps. Now, first of all, Cesar, I really hope you were not watching the live stream as you were driving home, because that's dangerous. <laughs> but, um, you know, when, when you get that many fish, how do you add that many fish to a tank? I, I'd like to hear how you added that many fish. That, that's a lot of fish. That's a big jump in the bio load. And uh, I've heard of people adding 20, 25 fish at a time. Um, certainly in a brand new tank, I hear people adding a lot of fish at once. But uh, yeah, I would love to hear how, how you actually introduced those, that many fish at once. Or maybe they were spread out to different tanks. I don't know. Um, one... Uh, one good, uh, uh, one tip I've heard is to, um, is to add a little bit of like, um, you have products like Fritz Turbo or a Seachem Stability, right? Tim's, you have a Tim's product, I think it's called, uh, where you have some bacteria in a bottle. Add a little bit of that when you add a lot of fish at once, and that can sometimes help to boost uh, the beneficial bacteria, give it a little bit of a jump start, and, and also treat your tank with a conditioner of some kind. But again, uh, one of the things that was brought up by Richard Thru, uh, the pond guru, was that some of these conditioners will bind, uh, will bind up, uh, or maybe not the conditioners, maybe the chemical treatment, maybe it's the chemical uh, filtration, will bind uh, some of the... Um, ammonia and make it unavailable to the bacteria by neutralizing the ammonia by binding it it makes it unavailable to the bacteria and so the bacteria will not develop so if you're adding a lot of fish and you're adding something like a Seachem stability or a Tim's or a Fritz turbo start pull the chemical pull your chemical uh, filtration out of the filter so that it doesn't bind to the things that are going to feed and get that bacteria going. So anyway, just some interesting stuff uh, to think about when you're adding a lot of fish. 
I usually would turn the lights off. I'll turn the lights off in the tank when I add fish and, and leave them off overnight. And then the next morning when the lights come on, the fish are kind of like, oh, you know, I guess you've always been here because, of course, they have like zero memory. So um, it doesn't mean you still don't have World War III breakout because uh, it, for cichlid keepers, all right? <clears throat> so anyway, just uh, Caesar, you got my wheels turning with your with your comment. Uh, Nicomo, Nicomo Bacon, Nicomo Bacon. That's a great name. <laughs> do you feed your fish shrimp from the grocery store? I've seen people do that, and uh, you know, I really don't. I, I guess maybe once a week, every two weeks, if you chopped it up nice, um, and it was some good, uh, good healthy uh, shrimp. Why not? You know, I mean, I guess, I mean, I feed, I feed them frozen krill, frozen krill, and, uh, you know, I soak it in some tank water, let it get soft, it has no shell on it, and I drop it in, and that video from a few weeks ago, where I talk about the, uh, uh, the slow motion, high definition feeding of the beasts, that was a frozen krill, which is, yeah, yeah it's a shrimp, it's a type of shrimp, I guess. Uh, Jennifer Moore, Jennifer Moore, I'm fairly new. I feel like my test strips could be faulty. I don't know. The reason is because my parameters say zero nitrate. I almost need a control tank laughing out loud. I was called a liar when I told them I had zero nitrates. Well, <clears throat> uh, here we go. Uh, Um, when, so when somebody says something that is, um, that you've never experienced, it doesn't mean that it's not true. I mean, it's, um, so why call her a liar? I mean, why, why be hard on somebody who's going through their own learning curve in, in, uh, keeping fish and, uh, you know, why jump on them? But, um. But I would say this, if you had a fairly new tank and you were getting a zero nitrate reading and there were some fish in there, I, I would say that you are, you may not, uh, you, you've probably not gotten through the, 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 you haven't cycled that tank because one of the, in, the indicators, at least the, the milestone that we're going for is zero ammonia, zero nitrite and some nitrate. We go, okay, good. We, we've reached the point where we have a developed colony of beneficial bacteria. So if your tank is fairly new and you have a zero uh, nitrate and you've put some fish in there, um, don't be surprised if you get uh, another cycle going, you know, or the completion of the cycle. You have a jump in ammonia, just stay on top of it very closely, uh, you know, watch it closely and uh, you may have to do, uh, you may have to, have to use some conditioner to save the fish or, or uh, you know, just keep an eye on it, you know, but, uh, but let's not gang up on Jennifer or anybody like her that asks a question that is either uh, a little bit out the realm, outside the realm of your experience or uh, something you find hard to believe. Get a little more information. Tell me some more about what's going on. Uh, how old is your tank? How many fish do you have in there? What's your, what's your filtration? And, you know, let's let let's try and and help some of these new fish keepers along. And uh, now, someone did comment. Uh, C D Cruiser, C D Cruiser. If your tank is planted, zero nitrate is possible. Uh, yeah, you've got plants in there sucking up the nitrates. But if you're getting a zero nitrate reading on a planted tank, does that mean that your plants are now going to start to die? Because don't don't you need uh, don't you need the uh, the nitrates in there for your for your plants? I mean, or have you have you reached a level of critical balance where the exact amount of nitrate is the exact amount that the plants need? Or anyway, so even that kind of a scenario, uh, and certain plant fertilizers, uh, you know, will add nitrogen, of course, to the water. Thank you. Jeff Chambers, you read my mind. That's what fertilizer is for. Thank you. Um, Chris Mossner. Mossner, my uh, African, African cichlids, 
love to rub on rocks even with good tank parameters. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's different reasons I've heard for flashing. Uh, fish can get itchy, just like humans. Uh, fish can get itchy and want to scratch. Uh, certainly, if you see a lot of it going on, uh, there is a possibility that there may be some type of a small uh, parasite. You know, take a good look at your fish. Um, maybe even pull one out and uh, uh, use a magnifying glass or even use the enlargement feature of your phone. Do something that will allow you to take a real close look at the fish, maybe around the gills. See if there's anything on there. If they're really scratching like crazy, uh, I mean, if you had something like an anchor worm or something, you'd probably be able to see it, but um, maybe with the naked eye. But, you know, take a look, and if, and if, they're, and if they're rubbing a heck of a lot, there might be something irritating them, something. Maybe a little bit of ammonia, maybe uh, something going on. Anyway, so let's take a look at some of the questions on, on this stream. Let's see what's happening here, what you folks have been talking about. If I can pull them up here. Let's see here. Jeff Chambers, I would love to actually find out how long it takes for a new sponge filter to cycle in an established tank. I read about two weeks, but with no data. Uh, Jeff, the things that I've, the, the, in, in most of the publications I've seen and graphics, it, it, it seems to be a four week. It seems to be about a month that I see normally. Um, uh, depicted in most of these graphs that show, you know, the ammonia going up and then the ammonia going down and the nitrite going up and the nitrite going down and the nitrate. It, it usually seems to, to be over a one month period is what I tend to see. So um, I would say give it a month before you would pull that sponge out and use it in another, uh, you know, in another tank in the hope that it would give you an instant cycle. Uh, let's see here, Medina. Medina cichlids, more surface area, the better. When it comes to media, very simple. I do what works, not what's hyped or peddled on YouTube. That goes for food as well. And you know what, Medina, Medina cichlids, I would agree with you. I mean, you have, to, you have to go off of your own firsthand experience and your own observations. There was one interesting uh, Chinese... Uh, media that Richard talked about, uh, you know, the Pongaroo, I think it, it was in part two, where it, it, it's, able to, it, it's able to say it has tremendous surface area, but the surface area is very poor for colonizing bacteria. So again, we get, we get different, different stories here. This is that, 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 uh, that long uh, sort of pipe-like yellow media that he simply broke and crumbled, uh, it, it's the way they measure surface area, right? They crush it and they spread it out. It has tremendous surface area, but is it usable surface area? Now sponges, matten sponges, Swiss tropical sponges, tremendous, tremendous surface area. Um, I have matten sponges in the sump underneath this tank. So, uh, but the, 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 the key message that you're putting across there, uh, Medina cichlids, I couldn't agree with more. Uh, don't discount your own personal, your own personal observations and conclusions. Gather all the data, look around, see what other people are saying, realize that some have an ax to grind, some of them might even have a vested interest in attacking another media, some have a vested interest in promoting a certain media or food. So realize that. Take it all with a grain of salt, then make up your own mind, and then watch and see how your fish do. You know? Uh, Vinny, my, my star sapphire, 
is doing really well on that Sarah food. And now that I've added some of that uh, mysis, uh, is doing very, is eating like a little pig. His stomach is not filling in as quickly as I would expect, but I mean, he's been a little bit caved in for a long time. And I have noticed that star sapphires in general do have a little bit of that shape where, uh, you know, from, from the pec fins back, they kind of, kind of curve up a bit, almost looks a little bit like a sunken belly, even when they're really, really healthy. But at any rate, so um, I've had some really good experience with that food. This is the uh, Piscine Energetics, Piscine Energetics. Uh, yes, Chris Mauser, this is a no Corona zone. You are safe. You are safe within this. And you know, I tell you, if this, if this stuff keeps up, we're going to be having a lot of virtual events. There's going to be a lot of virtual events. Some major uh, groups are canceling their tours. And so how are they going to be able to do concerts? There's probably going to be pay-per-view concerts that uh, people will just have to experience virtually uh, because they don't want to go into a crowded area. And so uh, who knows, you know, it's uh, an interesting situation. Uh, like I said, 250 employees uh, working from home now where my son works, Major League Baseball canceling spring training. I mean, these are massive impacts to the areas where they go. Uh, for example, in the Dominican Republic, where they have the spring training facility, that provides a tremendous amount of revenue and, and, and U.S. dollars to that area. And so when they pull all of that out because they cancel it, that's a tremendous economic impact on that area. So anyway, we'll see, we'll see where this plays out. Uh, Solar King, Ronnie, I really look forward to your videos. I've been raising and breeding for 40 years. I got the Sun Sun 3000, very happy with it. Cleaned the first time after running for two months. Thanks for your info. Hey, Solar King, awesome. Uh, I appreciate that very much, and I'm uh, glad to hear a positive report on the 3000. I have not used the 3000 myself. I'd like to get my hands on one. Uh, perhaps I will at some point. Let's see, Jeff Chambers, when does the Sierra Nevada virus... <laughs> Sierra Nevada. <laughs> uh, Sierra Nevada is a type of beer for those of you that don't know. <laughs> oh boy. Thank God we can laugh. All right. Someone says China has a blue sky because they've closed factories and have stopped polluting. And uh, I guess that's a good thing. Uh, let's see. Solar King, very happy with his 3000. Going to buy one more. That's great. I'm looking at more of your comments. Thank you. Thank you, Danny, for that uh, super chat. If I didn't say thank you for that second one, thank you so much for, for that and everyone that's chipped in here. Donald Fish by Vibes had a power outage, lost and lost some of his fish. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's usually the oxygen. When you have a power outage, it's usually the oxygen that, that, that ends up killing off the fish because you lose the surface tension uh, breakup, and so you don't get the, the O2, you don't, you don't get the, the oxygenation of the water and the fish suffocate, essentially. You'll see them uh, congregating at the top, uh, gasping where the oxygen is, um, you know, where the water is the most oxygen rich. And then you'll see, you'll see some of them tip over and die until the level of oxygen in the pond or in the tank can sustain the remaining amount of fish. And then those fish will kind of weather it through. But uh, unfortunately, uh, when you have a power outage and you lose that surface agitation, it, it can be pretty devastating. And uh, I speak from personal experience. And uh, let's see here. I'm going to go to the very bottom of the uh, comments here. If you have any comments that you would like to ask, ask them now. Okay, Sharpies models on aquatics. I have a deep substrate in a couple of tanks. 
does reduce nitrates. The gas does happen, but it, killing fish is a but it killing fish is a myth. Fish in the wild feed off the bottom and send up bubbles all the time. Interesting. So there you go. We have uh, uh, another one of those contradictions. Somebody banging the drum that don't let those gas pockets develop because when they release, they'll kill off your fish. Someone else saying that uh, it's really just a, a myth and not as dangerous as we think. So, um, <clears throat> and again, this is a report from somebody who is doing it firsthand. We have an anecdotal report and, uh, you know, it would make sense. It would make sense. So we have to uh, trade it. We have to look at it. We have to, we have to just weigh it in our own mind. If you think there's a risk versus you don't think there's a risk and compare that risk to um, the value of having a way of reducing nitrates naturally. And then you make your judgment call on that. And, um, uh, I'll tell you one thing that we, we well, we've all learned, especially in the last few weeks, boy, you've got to be on your toes because, there's a, again, there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of things to consider. Jeff Chambers says, well, if you're doing a, a fish in cycle, so you're trying to get your tank cycled with fish, you have to keep the fish alive Ammonia grows the bacteria, but also harms the fish. You're trying to accomplish two things at once. Fishless cycling is better. And you know, I, I, I think you're right, Jeff. I think that uh, there's a lot to be said for that. I've been fortunate in that I've had access to uh, uh, bacteria-rich media that I've been able to pull over from other tanks. I keep some sponges in the sump behind me, just floating around that I can pull out and put into a hospital tank if I need one. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, basically I get the hospital tank, I fill it half with tank water, half with new water, so it's just like a water change. And then I put in the media, you know, I, of course I treat the water so that that, that new water doesn't kill off everything. And, and then I, I, I put the, the media from the established tank in, in the hospital tank and I have an instantly cycled tank. And I've never had a problem doing it that way. Now, when I say that, keep in mind, moving water from an existing established tank to a new tank does not give you a tank that is ready for fish because the beneficial bacteria, most of you know this, is not in the water column. You'll bring over a very small amount of bacteria, but that will die off and you're your hospital tank will start to cycle, your new tank will start to cycle, you'll have an ammonia spike, and the fish you put in there will die. So you have to bring over several cups of substrate. That might do it. Uh, a sponge filter that's been sitting in an established tank, a dirty sponge from an existing canister, things of this nature will get that small hospital tank instantly, instantly ready to go. Not water only from an established tank because you will restart a cycle and you will kill the fish that you put in there and of course defeating the purpose of your hospital tank. So, uh, let me see, this is Rianne. Rianne, the guys at Bulk Reef, Bulk Reef Supply, love those guys, Bulk Reef Supply. They put out good videos and uh, they have a legit organization. Says that a deep sand bed eventually turns into a problem just because of the gradual buildup of detritus, eventually overwhelming the system, even with copepods, copepods being the little guys down there that are munching away at it. So, um, so there you go, something to consider. If you go through the archives of my video, of my video library, you will find that there was a period when I was using uh, fluorescent light diffusers. That's that waffle, that waffle uh, plastic, material that they use in, in uh, neon lights, you can break it up and use it to uh, separate your tank and things of that nature. I used to use it under my substrate because when you put rocks in there, it would, it would uh, dissipate, it would spread out the weight of the rocks. And uh, eventually what happened is I had a spike in nitrates. 
And when I, when I uh, took out the decor, what I discovered was that detritus had settled in between each of the squares, had really settled in tight in between the, the squares of the, um, uh, of the light, the fluorescent light diffusers. And so I had these pockets of waste and detritus that was just rotting underneath the substrate that was not being scooped up when I'd vacuum, it was just really wedged in there. And so uh, I ended up abandoning that. And I have a, a couple of videos where I actually pull out these massive pieces of, uh, of diffuser. And so at any rate, so um, yeah, I agree. I think that's a very, very good point. By the way, today's t-shirt is from Cunningham Cichlids. Cunningham Cichlids, he's one of those legit all-in uh, cichlid sellers. By all in, I mean he is not a pop-up seller, like O'Shea says over at the uh, Wonder of Cichlids. He's not a pop-up overnight. He is all in. He has a huge, uh, a huge, massive investment in tanks and fish. Uh, <clears throat> Cunningham Cichlids, check them out. They're very legit. And um, if you have a channel or a fish store that you like, if they send me a shirt or a hat, I promise I'll wear it in one of the live streams. I'm an extra large. So um, thank you so much, everybody, for sitting in. You know, you are, uh, you are uh, very much appreciated. And uh, thank you for going through this recent, uh, uh, you know, between IFG and, uh, and uh, Corey and, and, of course, uh, Richard. We, 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 we brought in some, some colorful individuals from the fishkeeping community and went through a lot together. And I really appreciate you all hanging in there with me. Uh, thank you to everybody who super chatted. Thank you to everyone who shared this stream. And thank you to my wonderful moderators uh, for hanging in there with me. And uh, I think this is a good time to wrap up. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, my friends. Get out there. Have some, fr have some fun. Don't stay in isolation. And, uh, you know, but be sensible. Be safe. Be healthy. And thank you so much. You really do rock. I do mean that. Bye-bye.